So hi everyone, I would like to thank Maria Nemazi who supported me and I owe her my, my life and my security of their campaigning when I was threatened with long years in jail and I was hiding in mountains in Morocco for criticizing Islam. There was no good Muslims in Morocco to help me. Um, I would like to thank Council of Ex-Muslims as well as when I established Council of Ex-Muslims in Morocco, it was um, a good opportunity to meet apostates all over Morocco and to have more, um, um, maybe a structured organization where we can speak and, and have more visibility, of course. Um, I would like to thank the Norwegian Hidden Society and Club N who helped me as well. Um, I would like to pay tribute to the strong Moroccan women who are um, fighting fundamentalism and many other enemies. We have so many enemies and haters. Um, Siham, Shayma, Tisam, to name just a few who are still in Morocco, who are women and proud and fighting Islamism from within the enemy territory to say. Um, what I'm gonna say is not a good story and uh, Morocco seems to many of you, I think, as a liberal country. A lot of people might went to Morocco, have some drinks, went to some hotels, see Marrakech, Sahara. It's a beautiful country with different weathers, with different um, things to see, mountains and Sahara and snow and everything between. With the diverse cultural heritage and ethnic heritage that have been erased by centuries of the Islamic colonization, by the pan-Islamic ideology and pan-Arabic ideology. Actually, um, I'm proud um, to have, like, um, to be a volunteer in writing, uh, taking part in um, EHU Freedom Thought Report, as well as the Council of Ex-Muslim Apostasy document and uh, you can find more information about Morocco there. Um, the constitution of Morocco is um, kind of a grocery store made to please everyone so you can find everything you want. Of course, Morocco commits itself to deep and bounds of togetherness and love and I don't know, with the Arabo-Islamic Ummah. But he respects the international treaties in Morocco have signed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and some resolutions on sexual freedoms and freedom of religion, even to change freedom. But of course, as many liberal Muslims and moderate Muslims say, within the framework of Morocco's religious identity and within their immutable national identity and you can guess what is it. Um, any amendments, any MPs actually can be just persecuted if they criticize Islam or monarchy. And Islam and monarchy as well as um, territorial integrity, which is within the problem of Western Sahara, are the, uh, considered as um, national federative constants that nobody, no Moroccan, should oppose. So you don't have the right to implement any, or launch any association, political party, organization, meeting, or anything that question or criticize those three positions, which is Islam, the monarchy, and territorial integrity. They added with the last reform, the democratic choice, I don't know what they mean by that. Uh, actually, in the latest 20, uh, 2011 constitutional reform that was uh, praised by Europe and especially the French president as a Morocco as an exception in the Arab and Islamic world, in the article 175 it was that it is prohibits any amendment of the provision of Islam in, in the country which outlaws effectively any cause for secular force taking Islam out of 
the country. Um, uh, shaking the face of Muslim could lead you to three years in prison. And it means that if just you say that you are not apostate to Muslim, don't talk to Muslims. They have like very weak and fragile faith. Um, any publication on internet, any print, if you just print a book, God Delusion or God Argument or any atheist or any even secular book or any book criticizing Morocco can get up to five years in prison. If you hold any illegal meeting calling for humanist, secular or atheist um, approach, you can get from six to ten years of the highest stretch treason of the state, and so on and so on. Um, when we launched the Council of Fixed Muslims, um, um, I don't want to talk about my experience as I, it doesn't represent everyone, but we got criticized by, first of all, by, of course, by the extreme left, liberals, all those who put in their charters modernity, tolerance, mm -hmm. Western values, universal human rights. Um, I think we have a problem of slogans. If um, we were criticized by human rights association, no association gave us the right to hold um, a, fair, a meeting there. No political party gave us its um, its offices to hold any even secret meetings. And more, or like the second human rights organization, the biggest one, is against homosexual rights. So we can see how human rights are in Morocco. But of course, when you read charters, it's all about tolerance, it's all about firmly committed for freedom of expression, not criticism Islam, of course. Firmly committed to human rights, firmly committed to um, we just, I just found myself with many others fighting on endless fronts. We fight pan Arab fascists who are secular, of course, but not for a secular democracy, but rather for an Arab totalitarian secular regimes. Uh, we had to fight against Amazir fascists as well as a result of centuries of persecution by the Arabs. Um, they learned the lesson and who want to kick all the Arabs from all the Maghreb and call it Tamazgha, which is just like the Kurds or other pan-Arabist, fascist, um, pan, whatever, movements. We have to follow the anti-feminist atheist movement or secular movement. We had to fight and criticize as well the Islam apologists left. If you see around the Arab media, Arab speaking media, you will see that secular is actually just like Islamists use Islam and instrumentalize religion for their secular cause. So we now hear by some Dr. Tarks way then that the prophet was secular. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also by uh, Fatima Mernisi and by Ahmed Asid and so many others. He said like when Khalid bin al-Walid, which is one of the companions of prophet, was called the, the blade of Islam, want to leave Mecca. And then he told to the prophet, what do you, if, if you had to rule the people, what do you choose? And say, Quran. And then if you can't find your sunnah, and then if you can't find, I will use my mind. And here is the real, the, the ultimate proof that Islam is about rational thinking. Thank you. Um, we were criticized by everyone, and especially the left, as the left wants votes, and of course, they have to look Islamist. And as extreme, as giving a bad image to secularism, as giving a bad image to 
It's over. Can I get some? One minute. One minute, okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm sad because I find it's the same case in the UK. On my second day in UK, I saw a conference of humanists and Muslims working together, maybe to make cakes or something. And I would, I'll, um, I feel betrayed. I feel betrayed by the West, I feel betrayed by the East. We're, we're I'm sorry for the word, we're bastards. Uh, I heard that if you speak Arabic in any Arabic language, you can't be for women's rights because those languages are misogynic and then you'll be, you'll be misogynic without even thinking about that. When I was asked about the good Muslims and I said, how could I talk about good Muslims when 1.1 billion Muslims are for Sharia rule? And it's not a good definition for good Muslims. I was labeled as the extremist. Uh, I feel betrayed, and I and I felt betrayed in this conference to hear a lot of things about Islam. Um, maybe just we play some nasheed now. Sorry for for this.